David Eby, thank you for taking the time. Thanks for having me. Um, you have been the Attorney General of this province uh, since you were first elected mm -hmm. back in 2017. Um, and for the last year and a half, you've been the Minister responsible for housing. Had that added to your portfolio? Is that something you wanted to take on? Um, since uh, working as a lawyer, I've been working on issues related to housing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and housing remains a really significant interest of mine. In opposition, I was the housing critic. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, on the downtown east side, I worked on housing issues. And I, I was really excited to get the housing portfolio. So, yes, yes, it was great news. I, I won't hold you responsible for everything that's happened for the last five years, but it is your government. And this is a government that campaigned on getting people into housing. When you walk down Hastings Street, East Hastings Street right now, and you see all of those tents out there, what do you think of the job your government has done? Well, um, I see highlights and I see huge challenges. We've had really a perfect storm of factors. Um, we had record growth in our population in the province last year. We put 100,000 people into the housing market looking for rentals, looking for a place to to buy and uh, and a lot of people fell out the bottom of the housing market. Uh, we, ha we lost some buildings due to fire, uh, due to flood, um, and, uh, and couple that with the stresses of the pandemic that made the mental health and the opioid crisis so much worse. The warnings came for many years about the, the failure of senior governments to invest in housing, both at the federal and the provincial level, that eventually we would face a reckoning around homelessness and a housing crisis. Um, and I think that's what we're seeing right now. Um, and so while we're trying to catch up at the provincial level uh, with housing, BC Housing is, uh, is probably the biggest uh, developer in Canada and potentially in North America with almost 7,000 units under development. Um, it's not enough. And those buildings that folks are living in down there are not adequate or appropriate housing anymore. And so we need a, a plan and the province will do that if I'm successful. Uh, to uh, get rid of those SRO buildings, replace them with appropriate housing mm -hmm. uh, for folks so that people don't have to live outside. Um, but uh, there will also be rules in some of the buildings. And I think that there has to be a balance between tenant protection and privacy within the buildings uh, and the rights of someone to do whatever they want, just like in any kind of housing anywhere. I, you know, uh, uh, families live in strata. So there are rules that restrict exactly what they want to do. Um, but these are the things we, we do live together. Do you get the sense that what's happening down there right now, I mean, there's always been that street scene on Hastings Street. We've seen it grown. We've seen it become more dense recently. The tents, though, over the period of time, the couple of weeks we saw all of those tents appear. Um, I haven't seen that before, what looked like a concerted effort. What do you think about that? Yeah, I've never seen that before either. And um, But I have uh, had the feeling, I think a lot of people have, that the downtown east side has never been in a more difficult or or in a more bad situation. I feel like it's been a steady downhill. Um, and uh, and this is, you know, you know, this situation right now, the encampments along Hastings, uh, is is just a getting steadily worse. Mm -hmm. And and so the tents were there. I think the people were there and they were ready. Like as soon as there was a, I assume that there was some sort of decision made about enforcement of either bylaws or police enforcement that resulted in the tents being able to stay for an extended period. Um, and so people were like, okay, you know, like we can do this. And uh, because they were previously setting up in other places. Uh, and so this crisis has been growing over a period of time. Uh, and, you know, it's been part of a series of other crises that are both linked and not linked to the pandemic uh, and uh, and so we've been responding reacting to encampments reacting to uh, here in Victoria um, and uh, the opportunity now is to be proactive to get ahead of this and to say what is our strategy for the downtown east side and for the province to take a leadership role to bottom line accountability to say okay we're going to coordinate these tables we're going to make this happen mm -hmm. um, which functionally is the piece that in my opinion is is missing and is necessary now but I just want to ask you about the numbers released from the coroner uh, again this month. Um, we're talking about uh, now, so far this year, uh, more than a, a thousand deaths. They're down slightly from, from last month. Um, but here we are in year seven of what was supposed to be a medical emergency, a province-wide medical emergency. We have more than 10,000 people who have now died of poison drugs in this province. Uh, What's being done? Yeah, just uh, horrific numbers. And first, I'll just uh, express my condolences to the family and friends of those who have passed away. I know it has a profound effect on people when they lose someone, regardless of the reason. And, and when it feels preventable and avoidable, like a drug overdose, that uh, makes it that much harder. 
I've heard really concerning stories about people who overdose multiple times a day uh, that show up in emergency rooms uh, and are released um, and uh, back into the community uh, and instead of being held and supported to survive. Uh, and that they're not held until they have serious brain injuries that are caused by uh, their overdoses. And so when I think about what's been missing in the government response, what the opportunity is, it's to be more interventionist with folks who are in that kind of crisis. Uh, and uh, in particular on the treatment uh, side of things, um, so that we can get people a chance to get out of uh, using drugs where they don't know where they came from, don't know what the strength is, and they're at risk of overdose. Uh, uh, David, thank you so much. Thanks, Stephen.